Hello everyone. So in this particular video, we'll be talking about analysis on multiple stock all at once. So this is going to be a relatively short video because most of the fundamentals were covered in the last video. However, we will extend those fundamentals here for more than one stocks. Okay. So I have basically imported the basic libraries here, pandas, numpy and matplotlib for plat plotting. And I've also included one pandas plotting library here for plotting the scatter matrix okay so uh, this is the data these are the four uh, stocks that we will be uh, referring to hdfc stock tcs stocks reliance stocks and ongc all of these links are in the description so you can go and copy paste from there you can also download the notebook from github i have pasted the uh, link to that also in the description okay so the first plot that we are going to do is the scatter matrix. So what is scatter matrix? It's basically used for finding correlations. Okay. So we know correlations. So for example, um, <clears throat> so first what we have to do here is PD dot con concat. So con concatenation of the different stocks closing prices uh, in the horizontal direction, which is basically meaning. So let's say what we are creating is we have uh, HDFC stock to our closing price we have a tcs stock closing price we have a, uh, there was reliance and ongc so there is a reliance closing price and ongc closing price so what you are doing you're basically taking all of this and forming a data frame that's all you are doing okay that's all you are now this is a data frame let's say df which has four columns this the one two three and four and whatever the number of rows are there are there that's all you are doing over here okay so um, <clears throat> we are going to have that and uh, axis equal to one is basically column wise okay because we have arranged them column wise if this were to be axis equal to zero here obviously here axis equal to zero then all of this would have come in differently so basically first uh, there would be hdfc then instead of another column you would continue this uh, column here with tcs so this is hdfc this is tcs and so on and so forth you have uh, reliance over here and ongc over here okay after that you are basically giving the names of the columns to that as i said you are making a data frame so you also have to name the columns over here and what you are doing is you are giving that to the scatter uh, scatter matrix uh, function so you are passing the data you are giving the figure size 3.5 3.5 and you are also uh, having the number of bins over here in case of histograms which we don't want right now okay so if you do if you hit shift and enter over here you hit shift and enter you run this particular cell okay so as you can see this is the graph now if you look at this graph you have to see basically it's a uh, symmetric matrix okay or symmetric graph whatever it means uh, basically this plot is symmetric so you see this is HDFC you see over here with in the row it is uh, referring to HDFC and in the column it is referring to Infosys or Infi. So this is how you uh, figure out I think we have Infi. No we don't have Infi we have uh, instead of Infi we have TCS okay so my bad naming convention. Um, HDFC, TCS, ONGC and Reliance now we are so graph does not change only the name changes right so you have hdfc over here in the call in the row and in the column you have tcs so you see there is not much of a, there is a weak positive correlation over here because you can see some kind of a line over here but if you see over here which is same over here you see reliance in the row and hdfc you see such a strong correlation over here okay so if you are not familiar with this so if you have a graph and your correlation looks something like this it's a very positive correlation and if you have something like this you have a very strong negative correlation okay um, there are others as well so basically uh, you know something like this which we say almost no correlation and so on and so forth okay so you see it's a straight line over here which means a very strong correlation so this is how you interpret the graph okay so we did this this is also somewhat of a weak strong weak correlation but not very good okay we uh, weak positive correlation negative correlation so this was positive and this was negative correlation correlation if i'm sure you know the uh to say the understanding of that okay now the second thing what we are doing is we are trying to see how can we see the volatility how to figure out the volatility or the risk let's say of different stocks so for that in the last video we have understood how to find the returns right 
So returns is basically closing price and then you take either the previous or the next day's closing price that is by shifting it uh, by one. You can also do minus one, positive one. Most of the things remain the same. And in order to get a, a positive or negative return, you basically do a minus one. Okay, that's all you do. And you do the same thing for even for TCS, you also do it for Reliance and you also do it for ONGC. Okay, so you hit shift and enter over here. And the other thing that I want you to know is it might be possible that sometimes not all the stocks are, uh, you know, having, let's say you have a new company that is listed on the stock market. Obviously, it will not have data before it was listed, right? So what you need to see over here is how many of the daily candle, uh, let's say, uh, data that we have. So in order to do that, what you can do, you can simply know the shape. So you can see over here, SDFC dot shape. Uh, of zero i can also have it for tcs i can have it for reliance and i can have it for ongc which is over here hdfc dot shape of zero tcs dot shape of zero reliance dot sh reliance dot shape of zero and ongc dot shape of zero okay i have also named it over here for the naming convention and you can see how many uh, basically what is the frequency of all of this so you can see most of them are over 5000 here only uh, tcs is having fewer than them but does not matter because again it is almost close to 4000 we will not have trouble okay now what i want is um, i am going to plot the volatility because i ha that's why i have calculated returns over here so in order to plot volatility i had explained in the previous video um, something why we find find the max scale okay and what is the use of nan max so generally what happens uh, i'll explain to you again if you have missed that one so whenever you plot let's say returns it's it's going to be almost very very close to zero so let's say this is zero okay and this is the y axis this is the x axis this is positive this is zero so this is uh, this part is uh, this part is negative this part is negative x axis and this part is positive x axis okay so whatever happens so let's say um, your uh, uh, your list of um, let's say your uh, returns are something like minus 2%, uh, 0.5%, okay, 1.5%, uh, so on and so forth. So if you plot it, what you are going to get is something of a normal distribution, okay, centered around zero. So there might be a little bit more of a, uh, what to say, um, density over here or mass over here, let's say if the stock was mostly increasing, but there will be days where you'll have negative returns also. Right now the problem is what happens if you have one stock that has been going let's say mostly down or mostly sideways and then one stock that is going mostly upwards. So both of these let's say one stock is mostly going upwards and another stock this is stock number one and there is another stock number two which is mostly going downwards okay. So the problem is or let's say instead of downwards this is mostly sideways sideways okay mostly sideways okay it, it did not do a lot of things over here so what happens is if you draw the uh, to say your uh, uh, graph for volatility you will have something like uh, this so it ha it will have more volume in the right hand side for for this you will mostly have it straight only very uh, what is it, since this is very uh, you know uh, small movement you'll have kind of a very squished okay this kind of a graph now the problem with this is the range do not match Right. So if we want to get all the, so this is only for two stocks, but you have more than two stocks. So if you want the plotting of all of them correctly, this is what you do. You figure out the, you figure out the most, what to say, flattest, let's say stock, most flattest, thickest stock. And then you take it as the axis. Then all the others can be fit inside this, whatever the graph is. Okay. So that is why we have taken the max. So if you don't understand, just, uh, Think for a second, you'll get it. Okay, NP dot H stack is basically, you know, as I had explained it over here. So this what we do column wise. This is called V stack, and this what you do over here. This is just in one line, row by row by row. This is uh, H stack. So this is what we have done. We have done H stack. You have all, so all these data is in one particular uh, column itself and then you find out the nan max you can say np dot max but there are sometimes nan values so just ignore the nan values and find the max so this is your max scale okay so max scale you have got 22 this basically means in some stock on some day you got 22 percent 
positive or negative movement so let's say you gave a hundred dollars so next day it became 122 dollars or uh, if that went in the positive direction in the negative direction you gave hundred dollars and it became 78 dollars in the next day that is 22 percent movement 22.5 whatever it is doesn't matter so now we are going to plot it okay so we are going to plot using plt.hist so we'll plot the returns of hdfc we are going to keep pins equal to 100 alpha is basically your opacity and your label is your label okay same thing for the other stocks as well um this is what i was talking about p dot x limit so this is from the maximum range so minus max to positive max so all the values will be shown and finally you'll have the legend and this is your plot okay now it is centered around zero why because generally you do not get a lot of movement sometimes you get uh, negative movement that's where your uh, frequency comes over here sometimes you also get a positive movement and generally if the stock is trending upwards you will get mostly positive movements and so you can see a lot of mass over here but generally you can say this is a uh, for the most part it's a let's say it's a histo it's, it's a normal or a Gaussian now one thing that I want you to infer from here is which is the most dominating single color okay so you can see dominating means so what happens when you are farther from the zero your movements are very very high that was what we were talking about your movements are very high if you're farther so who, who which color is let's say the farthest that you can see over here the farthest is over here you can see blue color is very evident single color they can be multiple colors you know there is trans uh, there is imposition so there is um, they can be multiple colors but i'm talking about single colors that is blue i think this is orange or very it's a peach color i think this is light green green and this is pink okay so what color can you see which is the most dominant on the extremes so you can see blue color is mostly on the extremes over here okay because all these colors are second you can also say pink to a little uh to a little um bit you can say but the idea is that the blue is the most dominant it is you can see it on the edges mostly so what is this what does this mean this means if you see mostly at the edges over here uh or at the edges mostly over here over here you can see blue is there that is not or some sometimes even pink it means that blue is the most volatile okay so the area of this is the blue is the most volatile and let's say you are a somewhat of a risky trader you would rather want to bet on the blue which is hdfc stock okay so i hope you understood uh, this is this was again a very small video because i was just focusing on the things that you can do on uh, comparison of uh, multiple stocks you can also compare the returns and you can you know you can take this uh, calculation this returns calculation over here and do find other things as well you know hold out strategy there are many there are many things you can do in the next video we will be focusing on indicators and uh, you know that is how we will be starting or we will be using the pandas ta library so i hope you understood the video and if you like the video please like and subscribe thank you very much and bye